But I am not a virgin, Nana said as she began to laugh. Prince Kelechi alongside the chiefs were shocked as they knew she was one of the most responsible maidens in the village. Once upon a time, in the kingdom of Agogo, there lived a very beautiful couple named Amechi and Adrugo. They were very kind people and they were blessed with a beautiful daughter named Nana. During that time, the kingdom was ruled prosperously by a very good king named Eze. The people of Agogo were very happy until one day. The king slept and woke no more. The villagers were devastated. And because King Eze's son, Prince Ekene, was still too young, his younger brother, Ikemba, was crowned king until Prince Ekene comes of age to rule. This decision was not supported by the people because Ikemba was very evil. To the extent, the villagers believed he was the one who killed his brother. During this time, the widowed queen took Prince Ekene and secretly fled the village because she feared for his life and hers, and no one knew where they went to. Amechi and Adrugo loved Nana so much and provided all she ever needed. They were so happy that the villagers envied them. But this happiness was short-lived. One day, Amechi mysteriously took ill. The illness was very serious to the extent that Adrugo had to sell his properties to be able to afford his treatment. But it was to no avail. Amechi died few weeks later. His death shattered Adrugo and she never remained the same again. Few weeks later, she died leaving her daughter Nana behind. Nana was devastated. She had no choice than to pick herself up as no relative was willing to help her. She was left with almost nothing as her father's properties were sold in order to pay for his treatment. Nana went into the bush and built a little hut where she stayed until she became an adult. Nana grew up to be a very beautiful girl, well-mannered and respectful. All the men in the village admired her and wanted to be with her, but Nana refused. They pestered her for a long time until Nana had to give them a piece of her mind, warning them never to cross her path again. They threatened Nana with a payback, but she did not flinch. Soon. The gossip of how proud she was spread round the village to the essence Priskelechi, the son of the sitting king Ikemba, heard about her and decided to see for himself. Kelechi was very proud and arrogant, a replica of his father. Kelechi approached Nana and she greeted him as usual. He felt pompous and decided to touch her inappropriately but his face was met with a very hot slap. At that time, Nana did not care who he was. She warned him never to attempt touching her again. Kelechi was furious and he vowed to teach her a bitter lesson. When Kelechi got to the palace, he was welcomed with a very sad news. His father, Ikemba, was dead. Kelechi was heartbroken and his friends consoled him. Later that day, the elder summoned him to decide how his father would be buried. When he came, they discussed their plans, but Kelechi refused. My father cannot be buried like a common king. In order to ensure his safe exit into the land of the spirits, a virgin must be sacrificed, Kelechi said. The chiefs were shocked at this proclamation because that was not their tradition. 
They tried talking him out, but he refused. Some of the good chiefs refused and protested while the corrupt ones agreed with him. This caused a great panic and confusion in Agogo, and all the virgins began to hide, while the not virgins were glad that they did not meet the requirement. It did not take long. Nana heard the news. She knew that she was going to be the chosen one. She had to find a desperate way out. She went into the village and began to beg any man she saw, both young and old, to marry her or even sleep with her to avoid being executed. But they all refused. All the men whom she rejected began to laugh at her, wishing for her to be the chosen one. Nana went home that day crying, looking for a way out. She thought of escaping, but there were palace guards everywhere. Meanwhile, Nana had a mysterious friend whom she helped some time back. He comes to visit her once in a while. Sometimes, once in a whole year. Nana would give him food and shelter, for he claimed he was a traveler that sought rest in Agogo. That night, as Nana was pacing around in her hut, she heard a knock on her door. Nana was scared. She thought it was the guards. Who is that? She fearfully asked. It is me, Eke. Please open the door for me. I arrived at Gogo late today, he said. It turned out to be Nana's friend. Nana hurriedly opened the door and let him in. AK had never seen her in that state before. He asked her what was wrong and Nana told him everything, begging him to marry her. AK had no choice. He looked at her with pity and knew what was needed to be done. Eke had always loved Nana. He saw this as an opportunity to marry her. They both agreed to be married and they consummated their marriage. Very early in the morning, Eke told Nana that he had an unfinished business and that he would return very soon. Nana did not mind. She wished him good luck and he left. Later that day, the palace guards came to her house and seized her. It was the third day and the day late King Ikemba was to be buried. Prince Kelechi told the others that she was the virgin that was going to escort his father to the land of the dead. But I am not a virgin, Nana said as she began to laugh. Prince Kelechi, alongside the chiefs, were shocked as they knew she was one of the most responsible maidens in the village. You are just trying to convince us otherwise, one of the chiefs said. No, I am not. As a matter of fact, I got married last night and I am now someone's wife. If you doubt me, let the midwife examine me, Nana said as they summoned the palace midwife to examine her. Few moments later, the midwife came out and confirmed that truly Nana was saying the truth. They were all shocked. Prince Kelechi busted out in anger. Who dared touch the royal sacrifice? He said as he ordered his guards to go into the village to bring any virgin that they can find. Nana was arrested and punished severely for what she had done, but she did not mind, for it was better to be beaten than to be buried with a worthless king. Few moments later, the guards brought in a new girl. It was the daughter of one of the chiefs. They all pleaded with Prince Kelechi, but he insisted on sacrificing her, just when they were about to be buried. A large army marched into Agogo, led by Eke. The people were shocked and began to run. They marched into the palace and slayed Prince Kelechi immediately. 
The chiefs and everyone present were scared. Who are you, young man? One of the chiefs asked. I am Prince Ekene, son of King Ezi, and the rightful heir to the throne. Eke said, When the people heard this, they were shocked. Some of them were happy, while others doubted him. They summoned a diviner, whom confirmed his identity. The people of Agogo began to rejoice. Finally, the prince has returned. They all chanted in excitement as they began to celebrate. It turned out that his mother took him far away to his grandmother's village where he was trained and prepared for the throne. He often came secretly to check on the village and its activity, after which he would rest at Nana's hut claiming to be a traveler. Before we proceed, where is my wife? Prince Ekene asked. The villagers were surprised, for they were unaware of his marriage. He told them about Nana. The guards rushed in and brought her to him. When Nana came, she was weak and badly injured. The prince rushed her to the herbalist where she received proper treatment, after which Prince Ekene told her everything. Nana was shocked and happy at the same time. Her bride price was immediately sent to her uncles for their marriage to be official, and that was the beginning of their love story. The news of Nana's marriage to the prince became the talk of the village. All who treated her badly began to regret. Prince Ekene and Nana were immediately crowned king and queen. Nana was so happy. She never expected her kindness to a stranger who was badly injured by the guards to be the change of her life. King Ekene ordered the body of Ikemba and Kelechi to be thrown into the forest where their souls found no rest. All the corrupt chiefs immediately realized their mistakes and pledged their loyalty to King Ekene. The king and queen ruled gloriously and the land prospered. This is the end of this story. Thank you for listening to today's story. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do, please leave a comment below telling us where you are watching from. Do not forget to like, subscribe and share this video. And if you don't like this story, please leave a comment below on how we can serve you better. We love and appreciate you. See you next time.